Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the stream. And today for you, I'm going to be running through a gameplay today. Uh, we have started the season actually pretty well. We have this series with the Cleveland Guardians. We won our first game, got blown out in our second game as Aaron Sival got absolutely lit up. Uh, and then we won our third game. So we are off to a decent start this season. I'm going to be running through a gameplay with Carlos Hernandez as my starting pitcher. Uh, one of the guys that I took as part to start my build, building my roster uh, last year. I'm kind of excited to try him out. He's got some pretty good stuff. So uh, before we get started, just going to run you through some of the position battles that happened in spring training to show you how some of the guys shook, shook out. Uh, so Lars Nupar actually had a very good spring training. Uh, so he took that starting center field job off to a decent start so far in those three games with the average power numbers could be better. But again, we're only three games in. Uh, let's see. Nick Gordon won the start opening day second base job. He is in a platoon with Scott Kingery, who's playing second base against lefties. And then Rene Pinto showed out again in spring training. So he's going to get the full-time starting role against lefties and righties uh, in our catching position. So he really did well last year. I was very surprised to see that. So we're going to see what we can get out of him in the coming seasons as well. Taylor Trammell, uh, he beat out Nicky Moniak for that bench slot. Uh, he did not have a very good year last year uh, when all was said and done. And Mickey Moniak did have a pretty good year last year. But uh, Mickey Moniak didn't perform. They performed pretty equally. Uh, but I think that Trammell had a little bit better of a preseason so that's why he's on the bench there uh he's gonna need to showcase his ability to stay in the majors early otherwise moniac might be nipping at his heels to take that position from him as far as our pitching rotation there glenn otto won the fifth starting position in our rotation uh he had like a killer spring i think his whip was under one and his era was under two in about like 30 innings pitch so really good to see that out of him Bullpen, really no changes from last year. Uh, pretty much looking the same. Just the new face in Seth Lugo there at our closer's position. Uh, so that should highlight everything I need. Let's get this game started. So we are going to be rolling with Carlos Hernandez today. Um, see some of the numbers from last year. Pretty disappointing season overall. But if I remember correctly, his FIP wasn't so bad. So I kind of like Carlos Hernandez and his makeup. Um, I'm hoping for better things out of him this season. A little bit of a bounce back this year. Hopefully get some mid-rotation upside out of him. As Miles Straw is going to be the first hitter of the game, we are going to throw him a low fastball. And away we go. So Straw's worked a 3-2 count. We're going to try to go up and in on a fastball. And we are going to miss high. This is a little problematic because uh, Miles Straw has got uh, some speed to burn and that dude's got wheels and uh, just on cue, he's going to take off for second base. Pinto's got a strong arm, but he has no chance with those wheels at first base. Uh, you see some of the stat cast stats right here. Top speed of 20.48 miles an hour. Good pop time of the 1.79, but just not enough to get Miles Straw. And because he stole that base... Steven Kwan is able to hit one to right field. Taylor Trammell got a strong arm, and he's going to get really close to getting uh, Miles Straw there, but too much speed, and now we are in danger here. We're going to try to throw a changeup to J-Ram, but we are going to miss our spot, and he is going to take advantage, and that is going to be one nothing Guardians. I can't get away with mistakes against J-Ram. Such a good all-around hitter. He will make you pay. But J-Ram getting a little too aggressive here, trying to swipe second base, second stolen base of the inning, but Rene Pinto shuts that down immediately. Did I mention Rene, Rene Pinto's got a cannon attached to his shoulder? Because he does. And then we are going to finish off Fran Mil Reyes and the top half of this first inning on a nasty slider, and we go to the bottom half with Santiago Espinal getting the guest pitch right, but it was off the plate. I forced the swing. Easy rollover, easy ground out, and we are down one out already uh, on one pitch. So got to make Tristan McKenzie work early, but not very good with the first hitter going down. And then a filthy curveball is going to be the end of Lars Newt bar. Only six pitches through those first two hitters. And he's got those two outs. Mitch Hanner got the fastball up in the zone, right? But can't elevate it. That's going to be an easy ground out to Gabriel Arias at shortstop. And we are back to the top half of the inning. Bobby Bradley in the dish. Carlos Hernandez is going to go elevating a fastball on him, and it's going to be a lazy fly ball to our center fielder, Lars Newtbar, for, for out number one. 
Coming up next is Ahmad Rosari, who's going to get frozen on a 99 mile an hour fastball up in his zone. He doesn't agree. We don't care because that's strike three. And then we're going to go back to that same spot and get Gabriel Arias swinging. So good second inning from Carlos Hernandez. The Urminator going to square one up, go to right field. Can he get there? No, not quite. From El Reyes with a diving effort, just can't quite get there. And we have our first base runner today. Going to check out the replay. Pretty decent jump by Framil Reyes out there. Lays out. Just can't quite glove it up, though. But he's able to hold him to one. And we are taking a walk with Taylor Trammell. So we are threatening here now. But Miguel Andujar is smoked with that curveball. That is not going to be the last time he strikes out with runners in scoring position today. Uh, coming up now, Nick Gordon. He's going to wear one on his shoulder, and we are going to load the bases for Rene Pinto, but he's going to get chasing a 92-mile-an-hour fastball way out of the zone. Too aggressive there on my part. Nicky Lopez going to barrel one up, but just out in front of it. Lazy fly ball to right field, and Fran Mil Reyes is going to end our scoring threat. Back to the top half, facing Richie Palacios up first. Oh, waiting here. I'm a little bit ahead of my audio recording. Okay, there we go. Uh, we are going to get him to chase a changeup low and away. Carlos Hernandez flying off the bump. Pretty athletic play to get that out over there at first base. Uh, and then we're facing William Contreras, who's going to take a walk. He had a couple of those today. Uh, he works a nice walk there. And then we are going to hang a breaking ball on an 0-2 count to Miles Straw. And the Guardians are threatening once again with two runners on. Uh, so Steven Kwan's coming up, pretty good contact hitter, but beautiful placement on this fastball, and we are going to get an around the horn 5-4-3 double play to get out of it and get back to the sticks. Really good pitch by Carlos Hernandez there. We're going to go Espinal 5 to Nick Gordon 4 to Miguel Andujar 3, and that is an inning-ending double play rally killer. Okay, so Santiago Espinal back at the plate, gets the fastball up in his zone, rips it, but straight on the ground to J-Ram, who is going to make the easy throw to first base to get the out. Uh, so Espinal 0 for 2 at the top of our order. Not what we're looking for if we're trying to have a big offensive day. Lars Nupar comes up, and he is going to get just flabbergasted by another nasty Tristan McKenzie curveball. So Nupar not off to a good uh, start. Two strikeouts and three innings already. Uh, Mitch Haniger is also going to get flabbergasted by the same McKenzie curveball. So McKenzie is on fire here to start with his breaking stuff. Looking pretty good. All right, we drop in a backdoor curveball on a 1-2 count to J-Ram, who's able to make contact, but a, li a light ground ball to our pitcher for out number one. From Mil Reyes, down 2-2 again. He is going to stay back enough on the slider to put it into play, but an easy ground out to Miguel Andujar at first base. Um, we're going Bobby Bradley now and a nasty curveball. Carlos Sanders is like, yeah, hey, you know what, Tristan, you can do it. So can I. And he just absolutely destroys, uh, Bobby Bradley on that curveball. So Yerman Mercedes, two strike count here. One, two, he gets the guest pitch right on the curveball and he smokes it to left center field. That is a game tying home run for the Yerminator. Exit velo of 103, total distance of 404 feet. Um, was thinking that McKenzie was going to go back to that nasty strikeout pitch, which he did. However, he left this one just a little too much up in the zone, and the Yerminator was able to pounce on that mistake. See it here, there. Boom. Barrels it up. Good timing on it and everything, and just watch it fly, big man. Good to get a run in that situation. Tied up going forward, and now we're starting to get to Tristan McKenzie a little bit. So Taylor Trammell up, and he is going to take a walk after that home run. So now we're starting to get to Tristan McKenzie a little bit. And then after that walk, Trammell off and running. He is going to swipe a bag. Pretty good jump at first base. So now we are threatening to score a second run in this inning. You see the very good jump by Trammell there. And William Contreras has a strong arm, but no chance there with that jump. Uh, but... We are going to turn over on a ground ball and ground out to third base there. So productive out for Miguel Andujar. So we are threatening to score another run here. Not the best at bat there, but still moving the guy up. Pretty impressive play by J-Ram at third base. They're going to show you the, some of the stat cast information there. Pretty long throw, 138 feet, throw speed of 84 miles an hour. 
So good play, good play at all for sure, because that would have scored a run. And then, oof, Nick Gordon grounds back to McKenzie, who makes a very athletic play coming off of the mound to keep Taylor Trammell at third base. And we are down to Renee Pinto again, who takes strike three that looked like ball. It looked like a ball. But we are headed back to the dugout, settling for the one run on the Yermen Mercedes bomb. One more time, looking at the slow-mo, the majestic bomb there. Tied at one through four innings. Each team has two hits. So back, we are facing Gabriel Arias, and we are going to give up another single. We are in trouble yet again. Two runners on, threatening with nobody out. Richie Palacios, lazy, pop, fly. Nicky Lopez is all over that. That is easy work for the Gold Shield defender. And... Carlos Hernandez looking to work out of another jam, this time facing William Contreras. And, ah, uh, pitcher's best friend, inning, ending, double play. Four, six, a three. We are gone. So Carlos Hernandez getting out of a couple of tight jams today thanks to some helpful double play balls and his defense behind him doing some work. And Nick Gordon to Nicky Lopez to Miguel Andujar. So Nicky Lopez leading off the bottom half of the inning is going to drive one to right. Another solid contact for Nicky Lopez, but that one is an ugly finder as it is right at Fran Mill Reyes for the first out in the bottom of this fifth inning. Santiago Espinal up for his third time and gets a curveball up in the zone, but really, really poor contact. Got under it. Good timing, but he was way under it. Easy pop fly to erase him, and there are now two outs in the bottom of the fifth. Lars Nukbar trying to make up for his two strikeouts, and he is going to take a walk there. So pretty good bounce back after striking out twice in his first two at-bats, and that is going to be the end of Tristan McKenzie as the Guardians bring in Sam Henches, who has already pitched five and two-thirds in this series alone. So he's got to be a little gassed, doesn't he? Well, he is a little bit gassed, and we are going to drive a smoking line drive into right center. Lars Nupar on his horse. The 73 speed. Can he make it home? Yes, he can. And we take a 2-1 to one lead here in the bottom of the fifth. The free agent signing Mitch Hanniger with a scorching RBI double to right center field. Sitting all over that high fastball from Sam Henches and went to eat. The Yerman, Yerman Mercedes up, but he cannot handle that high fastball that Miguel, um, Mitch Hanniger just drove for a big double, and we are out of that inning. Uh, and now we're going to get ourselves into a little bit of trouble pitching. So Carlos Hernandez came out there for the sixth inning. He gives up a pop fly to – I can't actually tell who that is. Uh, Tyler Ivey is going to come in to relieve him, so try to hang on to this one-run lead that we have. Uh, and, yeah. Tyler Ivey, pretty good bullpen arm. We're hoping for big things out of him this season as well, as well as going forward. Uh, so he's going to face Steven Kwan, who's going to get another soft pop fly. Newbar trying to track it down, can't get there. That was a mistake on my part. I should have tried to stay in front of it, and instead of giving up just a single, I give up two, a double, and now we are at second and third with nobody out. This is problematic because now we're facing Jose Ramirez. And he is going to rip one to third base. Espinal knocks it down, but not going to be able to get J-Ram at first base. And J Jose Ramirez now has two RBIs on the day from Mil Reyes up. He is going to fly out lazily to left field. Mitch Hanniger is all over that. And we finally get the first out of this inning. So maybe we can get out of this inning with no more damage. We shall see. So Tyler Ivey facing Bobby Bradley. Fastball up in the zone smokes it to left field, but that's another Adam ball right at Mitch Hanniger, and we now have two outs. We're looking like we might be able to get out of this with only one run of damage, and Tyler Ivey is going to throw a spike curve right into the dirt, and now we are in a lot of trouble. Second and third, Ahmed Rosario looking for a big-time RBI position. Ooh. Just off the edge. So now the bases are loaded. We are in a lot of trouble. But Tyler Ivey has no fear. He is going to hit Gabriel Arias with the hammer and get out of there. We go back to the sticks. Taylor Trammell facing the lefty. This is a tough matchup for him. He's going to hit the ball decently hard. Eats up 
Jose Ramirez ever so slightly, but he is able to hose Taylor Trammell at first base for the first out of this sixth inning. Miguel Anuar gets the fastball up in his zone and smokes it. Is this one gone? And oh, we call that WTP in the business, ladies and gentlemen. Warning track power. Nick Gordon also going to get this fastball up in his own correct, and he's going to rip this one hard, but that is another Adam Ball. So no damage for us in the sixth inning. Tyler Ivey out there for his second inning of work. He's going to give up another scorching shot to left field. A lot of hit, a lot of hard hit balls in the last two innings for both teams, but a lot right at guys right now. So Tyler Ivey working against William Contreras, 0-2 count. Freezes him on the inside half. Contreras did not like that call, but I will take it. Second strikeout for Tyler Ivey. Facing Miles Straw, he is going to hit a lazy fly ball to left field, and Mitch Hanniger is again all over it. So we head to the bottom half of the seventh inning. Brian Shaw is now on, and he is facing Rene Pinto, who is just going to lazily pop out to shortstop. No damage there with the first hitter of the seventh. For the Vipers, Nicky Lopez still trying to find a hit in this game, but he is going to take a walk. So that is a positive development for him. And now we're back to the top half. Santiago Espinal gets the cutter guess pitch correct, but it was a little too early on it. Probably should try to drive that down the right field line. Good location for Brian Shaw. That is out number two. And Lars Nupar going to get the fastball up in his zone. And he hits a scorcher down the right field line. He's not going to be able to get anything more than a single here, but now we've got runners at the corners with two outs and our big RBI man, Mitch Hanniger, at the dish. He's going to get the guest pitch right, but it's a slider about a foot off the plate, and he wouldn't hit that with an oar. So we're going to go to Jason Adam in the top half of this inning. See the stats so far there. Only one appearance to this point. Pretty nasty stuff. Uh I'm pretty good pitcher with him too. Good fastball, excellent breaking stuff. He's going to face Steven Kwan here and get him to roll over a good slider below the zone. Nicky Lopez almost sails the throw to first base, but he is able to get Steven Kwan. Jose Ramirez is a problem, folks. He worked me in this game, and he's going to work another walk off of Jason Adam. Took a couple of tough pitches, but from Mel Reyes... Well, J-Ram getting a little bit aggressive again. That is his second caught stealing of the game. You got to stop running on Rene Pinto, my man. 1.76 pop time. You're going to have trouble stealing that. Rene Pinto, two for three at gunning down runners. As you see, he is pumped up after erasing a crucial runner in this game. And then good slider by Jason Adam is going to get from El Reyes to end the eighth inning for the Guardians. New pitcher for the Cleveland Guardians is, I'm not even going to attempt that name, but it is his major league debut. Nikola Chagnashek, no, whatever. Anyways, Yerman Mercedes facing him there, gets the fastball in the inner half, and he turns and burns on it. And he is going to get two stand-up double as the left fielder is unable to track that ball down. And we are threatening right now. And your member say is not very fast. We are going to play aggressive with our substitutions here, and we are going to bring in Scott Kingery with his wheels. Uh, a little bit disappointed to get Yerman Mercedes out of the lineup, but we're okay for the speed. And we're also going to be pinch hitting Taylor Trammell with Corey Dickerson. A little bit more contact. Um, Trammell more of a power guy. So uh, good thing I had him because that was a strikeout pitch for Taylor Trammell, but uh, Dickerson able to reach out there and just kind of slap it there and move the runner up to third base with less than two outs. So we're trying to manufacture a run right here. Good position to do it. Miguel Andujar, remember how I said he struck out multiple times with runners in scoring position? Well, there is number two on a good curveball. Nick Gordon trying to get that runner home from third, but chased the fastball out of the zone. Had to guess pitch correct, so I got myself a little amped up for it, and that was a mistake. So Bobby Bradley, after fighting off a couple of tough pitches, is going to get smoked by a good curveball from Jason Adam. That is out number one in the top of the ninth. Ahmed Rosario, no chance with that sweeping slider from Jason Adam. That 99 break on that slider. And then finally, we are going to be facing... And a second here. We're going to be facing... Gabriel Arias, who is going to pop up a fastball in the inner half, and we are back to the dugout trying to get this walk-off win at home in this early season series against the Cleveland Guardians. 
So leading off is Rene Pinto again, 0 for 3 on the day, and it's 0 for 4 now. Blown away by the smoke, 97 miles an hour from the Guardians pitcher. Nicky Lopez gets the guest pitch correct, but he is not going to be able. He's out in front of a little bit, and it's a soft ground out. So not the best game day at the plate for Nicky Lopez today, 0 for 3 with a walk. Back to the top half, we're looking at Santiago Espinal, who is going to rip a hard ground ball to short, but Gabriel Arias is all over it, and we are through nine, all tied up at two, ladies and gentlemen, so a little free baseball for the fans here in Vegas. See, Guardians two runs on seven hits, and the Vipers two runs on five hits, so a pretty well-dominated pitching outing. And here is Brooks Rally. We're going to the lefty with some lefties coming up in the Guardians lineup. You see the numbers from last year. Pretty decent season from Brooks Rally. Got some nasty stuff, and he's tough on lefties with some of that too. As you're going to see, Richie Palacios, no chance on that slider. Perfectly placed. Good sweep to it. No chance. Now, Miles Straw going to pop up and run around first base. That is going to be two outs. Looks like Brooks Rally might be able to get out of this one. Facing Stephen Kwan. And that is going to be a light ground out to shortstop. And we go to the bottom half. Get these sticks going, boys. We're trying to get this win. New pitcher for the Cleveland Guardians is Trevor Steffen. He throws smoke, but he can't control it. Lars Newpar takes a four-pitch walk to start the inning. Miguel, uh, Mitch Hanniger at the dish. He is going to take a four-pitch walk. And now we are cooking with gas. As Scott Kingery, who came in as a pinch runner for Yerman Mercedes, at the dish, gets a 1-0 count. Gets the guest pitch correct. Boom! Smoke down the line, and that is going to be a walk-off hit for Scott Kingery, and your Las Vegas Vipers are going to win this game. I was a little bit nervous with Scott Kingery at the dish because um, I really wish that Yerman Mercedes was in that position, but I'm pretty proud of what Scott Kingery was able to do. Um, that's why we have him on the bench. You know, he can come in and be a strong pinch runner for us, and he could do a little bit of work with the stick too. So see the final numbers there. Guardians, two runs on seven hits, no errors. Vipers, three runs on six hits, no errors. Your winning pitcher today is Brooks Rally. His first win, your losing pitcher, Trevor Steffen. It is his first loss. And the Vipers take the first series of the 2023 season in a 3-1 to one efforts. So um, that's going to be it. I hope all the audio on this sounded pretty good. I hope the timing all matched up pretty well. Um, I did not do audio recording when I played this game because it was late at night and I didn't want to wake up my fiance. So um, I might try to do more like live comms and then cut it up and everything like that. I also might... After editing this the first time, I might do more of a highlight style last time instead of just more of a results profile like I did this. So, uh, anyways, in the meantime, between time, I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your evening. Keep an eye out for some good content. We got a lot of content uh, ready for you guys. I actually recorded this after, like, uploading about six or seven videos to my private. Um so uh, we're going to be dropping content pretty consistently for the next couple weeks, hopefully. Uh, but anyways, meantime, between time, I'm out of here. Have a great rest of your day, and uh, I'm out. Deuces.